Good morning, Doug Levi here, Strategic Insurance Services, the insurance trainers.com, here with commercial insurance, the basics. So on our team, we're getting lots of questions and we also have insurance sidehustling.com. We've got lots of questions from people that have maybe been in the insurance business for a little bit, or even those that have been in for quite some time that are mostly doing personal lines. So think home, auto, boat, flood, umbrella. Right. And now they want to get into commercial insurance and they're like, oh, it's I, I, it's scary. It's complicated. It's tricky. What about accord forms? There's so much to learn. And yes, that is true. But I'm here to tell you it is doable. And so I love commercial insurance. I've been in the insurance business 18 years. I've done commercial insurance that whole time, as well as personal lines, as well as life and health. And I'm certainly no expert, but I will tell you that it is doable, it is approachable. So we want to just try and unpack and explain some of the very basics of commercial insurance and really what are some things to think about as you're talking with your clients, you're talking with your prospects and getting started. So the first thing we wanted to just do is say, commercial insurance, what is it typically based on, right? Like, how do I understand what are they even going to look at? What do I need to ask my prospect or my client to understand what I need to do to get a carrier to give me a rate? So there's three big things. And I remember when I started in the business, there was uh, uh, someone that told me this, and this has always stuck with me, that commercial insurance is really based on one of three things. So think about this for a second, okay? It's either going to be based on gross revenue. So that's the sales of the company or entity. Right. So I'm a commercial contractor and my revenue is five million dollars a year. That's an example. Or it may be based on my payroll. So how much am I paying my employees? Let's say that same contractor pays his employees a million dollars a year. That payroll is what's going to be factored for the workers comp. OK. Or the square footage of my building or my office. So take this business, for example, we're an insurance agency. The business insurance we have for this office, they don't care about the revenue. They don't care about the payroll. They want to know how big the square footage is. And that's in part how they're going to determine the rate. So when you're talking with a prospect and they have a business, those are three things to keep in mind. And if they give you pushback, well, why are you asking? That's kind of the reality is this is what we need to get the rate for you, right? Okay. So that's very high level on some of the things you need to ask. Then I wanted to just break down and kind of get into the basics of commercial insurance. What are things that most businesses need to have? So most businesses need to have, at a minimum, general liability. This is probably the most basic core of almost any insurance policy for a commercial business. And I don't care whether you are a commercial client and you own a building or you may be a commercial client and you're leasing space in an office. Oftentimes, and one of the advantages that we talk about in our industry, and not all industries can say this, is you've got to have it. It's a need, not a want, and you're likely already budgeting for it. So if I'm signing a commercial lease in an office building, the landlord is going to say you have to have general liability. What does that mean? Think slip and fall. That's probably the easiest example. Now, there's more to general liability than that. Again, there's I'm sure whole courses on this, there's whole classes on this uh, for continuing education insurance. I'm trying to keep this very, very simple and basic. What I want people to think about is someone walks into a business, they slip and fall and try and sue. That is probably your most basic general liability. Maybe even think you hear radio ads or TV ads for an attorney. And what do they say? Slip and fall? Injured? Right? That's a That's a classic example. So you know, think about a restaurant. I put, think of a restaurant owner, somebody comes in, they slip and fall on wet floor and they try to sue the restaurant. That's classic general liability coverage, okay? Most general liability, you'll see we recommend 1 million per occurrence, 2 million aggregate, right? And that means in any one instance, I'm covered for $1 million. If they try and sue me, I've got up to a million dollars to defend myself. If there are multiple claims in the year, I have a maximum throughout the year of 2 million. So that's general liability in a nutshell. Then you've got property insurance. So think about property insurance. I own a commercial building. I either occupy it myself or I rent it out. I need coverage for that building. I've got real tangible property. If there's a fire or a hurricane and my building is damaged, I would be lost, 
I would have a loss and I need coverage for that. Or what if you own a building? I'm sorry, what if you rent a building? Maybe you're renting space in a building and you have your contents. You may have 100,000, you may have 200,000 worth of contents. Same thing. If there's a fire or a wind or a pub pipe breaks and causes a flood, any of those things could cause damage to my contents. And I need to replace either my building or my contents coverage. That's property. And then the third one that really is can oftentimes be overlooked as I work with a lot of prospects that maybe aren't with us right now would be business income coverage. So what is business income coverage or business income replacement mean? Well, that says I own a building, I rent it out, and I use this in the example here. So let's say I own a commercial office building, I lease it out to a mortgage company. That mortgage company pays me $3,000 a month in rent. There's a fire and the building burns down. I need to have a bucket of money to rebuild my building, but what about that $3,000 a month I'm used to taking in as rent? That would be a classic example of business income replacement. If you don't have that coverage on your policy, you would not get that loss of income. Most businesses, we strongly recommend to have that loss of income coverage. You then have workers' comp. So workers' compensation is for your employees. So think about this. This is, again, maybe you hear the, the commercials on the radio. You're injured uh, at your workplace, right? So I put here, uh, here's an example. I own an auto paint shop, right? So think about like a collision or repair facility. And I have an employee that slips and falls and he breaks his wrist, right? He trips over a paint can, falls, breaks his wrist. He can't work. The worker's compensation is my responsibility as the employer. That will cover and help him with his medical bills as well as a portion of lost wages. Most states require that when you have a certain number of employees. We then put business auto insurance. So let's say I own vehicles as a part of my business. I put, here's an example. I own a plumbing business. I'm a, a, a plumbing contractor and I have two trucks. I need coverage for my trucks. What if I get into an accident and I get sued? That's liability. What if my vehicle is uh, stolen or vandalized? That's comprehensive or comp coverage. If I get into an accident and I'm at fault, my car's damaged, that's collision coverage. Uninsured motorist, what if the other person's at fault? They have no coverage at all, right? So that's a classic example of business auto. And then the last one I put would be professional liability. So we're very much a service-based economy today. There's a lot of people that are either consultants or what we would call white-collar professionals. And that's not saying that only white-collar professionals need this, but that's probably the easiest in terms of teaching this right now. So think about this. I'm an architect. I need coverage for my professional liability or errors. Let's say I design or draw a building and I say, you know, the building needs, and I'm not an architect here, but say the building needs, you know, the roof a certain size and my drawings have the roof the wrong size. And after the building is built, we realize the roof was the wrong size and it was my fault because of my drawings. And the client comes back and says, I'm not paying for that. And they try and sue the architect. That's professional liability. So, very simple crash course in commercial insurance. Those of you that are a part of our team at Strategic Insurance Services or uh, as part of our insurance side hustling program, if you go onto our toolbox, you can find um, where the basic fact finders are. And sorry, I pulled up the wrong website here. And on the toolbox, You'll see under our fact finders, our Zylo fact finders, we have one for business fact finder. And you can get some very basic info and that will start your process. So as always, guys, if we can help in any way, if you're not part of our team and are interested, please feel free to reach out. You can call me or text me 727-385-5082. Or you can email us at info at getstrategicins.com. And as always, guys, dream big and make it happen. Have a great day.